Lord, we have gathered here to take a step back from all of the Christmas shopping and hustle and bustles and wrapping paper and bows and ribbons and scotch tape to sit here and to remember the true meaning of this season to open our hearts once again to the love and the joy and the peace and the hope of the Christ child. Be with us now, O oh Lord, and open our hearts once again to the joy that only you can offer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our rock and redeemer, now and forever. As I was looking at the scripture passages this week, I kept coming back to Mary and her song. Her magnificent song of praise and lifting up with thanksgiving to God. Here is a young child, that most of us would say, a child in today's society, who had been blessed by God to carry the Christ child into the world. She must have been filled with fear. She must have been trembling. People in her village must have been looking at her very oddly. And what happens when she goes and she sees Elizabeth? John the Baptist, who is in Elizabeth's womb, jumps for joy when he hears Mary's voice and knows that Jesus is close. These two women, one, Elizabeth, who is older and past the years of giving birth, is now found to be waiting the birth of John the Baptist. And here Mary, this young girl, this virgin, has been blessed to carry the Christ child into the world. These two very unseeming people that we, you and I, probably would not choose to be the ones who would carry the Christ child into the world, have been chosen for this amazing, amazing thing to do. Their faith has touched them, and God has chosen them for this amazing place in God's world and in our hearts. And what happens when Mary sees Elizabeth? She sings out in joy, and she gives praises, and she says, How wonderful is my God! My God has looked down on me, a lowly servant, and God has blessed me. And she sings for joy. Joy that she has been chosen. Joy that she is called to be an instrument of God's work. Joy for her love of God is right there with her. You know, when I was in seminary, I worked at the First Congregational Church in Gardner, Massachusetts, and I was their Christian education director. So it was my job every year to gather all the kids together with all the teachers and to do our Christmas pageant. That, if you've ever done it, can sometimes be a difficult task. <laughs> and I remember getting all my little shepherds and all my little angels all in order and getting Mary and Joseph all together and everything was going great. They were coming down, they were standing where they were supposed to be, they were singing the song, and here it comes, the big finale when we all stand up and we wait for Mary and Joseph to bring the babe down the aisle and to the altar. And what happens? Mary and Joseph burst into tears. <laughs> All the way down the aisle, they are crying and crying. And we're just standing there saying, oh my gosh. And they sniffled and snuffed all the way up. And they placed baby Jesus in the manger. And then they ran like crazy for their parents. <laughs> Out the door. <laughs> and I remember the pastor very calmly saying, well, just think about it. If you were Mary and Joseph, wouldn't you have wanted to run the other way? <laughs> but here we don't have Mary crying. We don't have Mary 
running for the door as fast as she, she can. What do we hear? We hear her singing and being filled with joy and praising God for she knows an amazing thing has happened. She is carrying the Son of God. She knows that she has been chosen for something wonderful. And she is so filled with joy that she bursts out in song. This week, I have had two children with strep throat. I spent my second Saturday at the doctor's office, and I am not feeling very Christmassy. I still have a list this long. Santa is very much behind. I haven't even begun to wrap. And I was getting a very good dose of the Grinch. I was thinking, oh my goodness, to be a pastor during this season is just so difficult. Put on top of that being a single mom where you have to be the Santa and get everything done. And then we lost our Christmas tree stand. Don't know where it is, but you know, suddenly someone has decided across all the stores that the universal Christmas tree stand that they used to have for artificial trees will no longer be available. <laughs> So I had to take this Christmas tree stand and wrap it with duct tape and put in pieces of wood so our Christmas tree wouldn't be like this. <laughs> it's up in the wall and if anybody sneezes near it, I'm not responsible. <laughs> I have been feeling really Grinch-like this week. And when I was at CVS picking up yet another prescription, the lady said to me, Merry Christmas. And I just sat there like a deer in the headlight. And I thought, oh my goodness. Absolutely. Merry Christmas. Victoria, you have lost your way. You have let the stress of all of the things that are going on get in your way. You have forgotten the joy of the season. You have forgotten to sing like Mary has that an amazing thing has happened, that God has brought God's Son into the world, that a child is about to be born once again in our hearts, that hope and peace and love and joy are back, and that we need to turn away from all those things. Because you know what? It really doesn't matter if I wrap that looking perfect like a cover of good housekeeping, or if it looks like I just took tape and wrapped it all up. It really doesn't matter if my tree is a little crooked. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that I open my heart to the joy of the season, that I open my heart to the love of the mystery and wonder that a child has been born, a child that was born to be our savior, a child that came to open our hearts and to show us the love of our God. I have forgotten, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. I have forgotten to look around and to give God praise and to remember the joy of God. I have forgotten that this is a sacred season. I don't want to be like that anymore. I want to sing and I want to praise God and I don't want to be like those poor Mary and Joseph that were filled with tears. But I want to be instead a child of God that embraces the mystery and the wonder and the joy and the hope of this season. I want this Christmas to be different. We have walked in darkness out there in the wilderness so long this past year. 2016, I think, will go down in history as being one of the most difficult years for most of us, for our country, for the world, for the pain of God's children. And I know that this year, I need to carry that hope and peace and love and joy in my heart more than I ever have done before. I need to stop being the Grinch, and I need to open my heart. 
I want to follow Mary's footsteps and sing praises to God. Because that is what we are called to do. How many of you, when you were little in Sunday school, saying, I've got the joy, joy, joy of Jesus down in my heart, down in my heart to stay? You know, somehow I've got the joy, joy, joy of Jesus down in my heart, and I packed it away. But I'm going to pull it out again. I'm going to pull it out again along with my manger set and everything else that I have. And I'm going to remember that we are called not just to sing, I've got the joy of Jesus down in my heart, but to live it, to be part of it. And the next time I find myself in a store and I question, should I say Merry Christmas or not? I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say Merry Christmas or God be with you. I'm not going to silence myself because I have been silencing myself. I have been keeping my joy down somewhere inside of me. But God is calling, I believe, all of us during this time to be like children. Have you seen children when they're really excited? What do they do? They jump up and down, they're all excited, and they sing. I love it when I'm cooking supper and I can hear one of my children singing to themselves because I know they're happy. I just know that they're happy. When's the last time you sang for joy? When's the last time you opened your heart and you said to God, Thank you, O oh Lord, for you are wonderful and you love me just as I am. And you call me to be your servant. And I am so thankful. And I'm going to carry your hope and your peace and your love and your joy in my heart and share it with others. I bet it's been a while. I have to say it's been a while for me. So what I'm asking you to do is while you are doing all your stuff that you need to do for Christmas, while you're planning your relatives to come, while you're getting off, checking off everything off your list, I want you to remember Mary. I want you to remember her joy. I want you to find a way to sing for joy to be like a child, for something amazing is about to happen in our hearts again. We are about to gather here to light the candles and to welcome the Christ child back into our lives, to welcome that hope that only God can give, to sing like the angels and be filled with joy, and to know the love of our God, and to feel the peace that God gives us. We are about to be transformed. People of God, during this waiting time, during this Advent, get rid of all the clutter. Open your hearts. Dare to sing with joy. May the joy, joy, joy of Jesus be down in your heart. Down in your heart today. And may all those that you come encounter with today Know the love, peace, and hope of Christ. May you all sing like Mary sang so long ago. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Amen.